Oh my gosh, what are we doing? I don't know. Hey everyone, this is Travis Lakata, and I'm here with another episode of Laughing As We Go, the podcast where I talk about pretty much whatever I want to. And if you're here listening to me, there was probably some begging and pleading to get you here. So thank you for listening to me. And uh, I'm here to talk about episode two from Survivor season 40, Winners at War. Uh, I enjoy doing the draft analysis and the review of the premiere episode. So I thought I'd come back for episode two. Uh, so thanks for joining me. I'll be doing uh, a draft update. I'll give a few highlights from the episode that stand out to me and give a little, uh, I guess, prediction or moving forward to the next episode, what I think might happen. Uh, so let's dive into a uh, draft update. So yeah, uh, Megan is still winning and no, I'm not really surprised. Uh, this week, again, uh, no one won points for most confessionals. Uh, we again had a tie between players, so zero points were earned with confessionals. Um, Megan did earn a point for Kim Spradlin Wolf finding an idol. And by the way, one of the most amazing things about having so many players to root for is then having those players go against each other. So when Kim shares her idol with Sophie because it's a two part idol where she has a two part idol where she has to give it away, then Sophie's like, "Oh, I wouldn't have given it to the idol to me." So in that moment, it's one part. Oh crap, Kim's in trouble, and then it's another part of, "Ha, I think Sophie's in a good spot." So very interesting this season with having all of these amazing players on the watch. So a uh, really cool uh, moment right there. Um, so loving the season so far. Uh, I also earned a point for Denise finding an idol. And I want to give a shout out to Ben Driebergen for helping her find it. Uh, ben is on Megan's team. So I dodged another point going her this her way this week. Um, uh, I like that Ben helped Denise. Um, I think it should help his game, typically. Um, I thought the whole sequence of him helping her, um, basically telling her that, hey, it doesn't have to be me. You can give the idol to someone like Adam, and we can kind of build unity. Uh, I thought that was great. Um, my only question is, why isn't Adam on board with Ben? Didn't Ben save Adam last week by letting him know he was on the voting block? I'm a little confused by that, uh, but if I were to make any guesses based on what we saw in episode two, it appears that maybe a few players believe that Ben is just too sporadic. Um, so maybe despite Ben's help last week, Adam might be thinking long term that there's something there that he can't trust. I so I don't know. Uh I like Ben and I hope he can find some allies to get further in the game. Um so that being said, Megan is still in the lead. She has a total of one point after two episodes, and I'm so close to zero. Uh <laughs> I'm I moved up to minus one point after episode two. Okay. Um so that's a draft update. Megan is still winning. No surprise. Uh, before I get to highlights from Season 40, Episode 2, uh, I want to talk about whinyparent.com. Whiny Parent is the parenting blog that Megan and I started to share our parenting adventures and struggles. So we talk about our experiences as parents, our date nights, whenever those happen. Uh, give product recommendations, the occasional cocktail recipe, and basically any and all tips that we can think of that we think you'll find useful. Uh, so please head over to whinyparent.com, follow our blog to stay current on all of our content. Uh, we usually post on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but if you subscribe to our blog, you'll get notified as soon as we share something new. 
Uh, you can also find Wani Parent on social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. And that's at Wani Parent, W I N E Y Parent. Okay. Uh, let's get back into episode two of Survivor Season 40. Uh, and I have a few highlights uh, I'll touch on. I, I have to start with that rickety ladder that Tony made, uh, which had me extremely nervous. Um, it reminded me when Eric Reichenbach from Survivor Caramoan, uh season 26, he started to climb a tree towards the end of the season to try to get some food because he was starving. And I, I, I was really concerned that he was going to fall from that tree. So I had a similar feeling with Tony this episode. Uh, one thing I'll also say about the scene, when you're trying to track confessionals, which FYI, I probably did a pretty crappy job this week. Uh, there were so many confessionals from the players talking about breadfruit, the ladder that Tony made. Um, so it was is difficult to narrow down all of those confessionals. Uh, the whole thing, the whole scene, just had this fun, lighthearted feel. Um, and even though my own anxiety, anxiety levels were up because I was so worried he was going to fall, um, it was really fun to watch. Uh, another highlight to point out for the second episode would probably be the sudden turn of Danny Boatwright. Uh, first off, I have no idea what it would be like to be stranded on an island, starving, exhausted, trying to figure out who you can trust long enough to get to another day. Uh, so I don't blame a person's paranoia. Um, so I think my thought or my question is what we saw from the show. It seemed like the paranoia came out of left field. Did she suddenly voice her concerns and then it became real? And then she had to make a move because it was suddenly real? Or was this paranoia around earlier and we just didn't get to see it play out on TV? Uh, I think it would be interesting to know if this all happened within an hour or two. Or if it was something that had been brewing for a couple of days. Um, I think that would probably help at least me, feel like I know why the heck that happened. Um, next, I want to touch on Jeremy and Natalie. First, love to see that Jeremy was able to turn it around after, you know, Natalie was sent home blindsided last week. I don't necessarily agree with that vote because Natalie would have been useful in the challenges. But if you wanted to blindside Jeremy in the future, wouldn't you want to make him comfortable early on so that way it seemed like everyone was a tight group? Uh, so keeping Jeremy close, I feel like the, taking Natalie out this soon was probably not the best move. Um, so I think Jeremy being in a position where he could move around and talk to others this week uh, about who was going to be going home uh, was definitely a nice change from last week's episode. Um, now, Natalie, again, able to find another advantage uh, and send that advantage to Jeremy for one fire token. Uh, the safety without power advantage means that Jeremy can leave tribal council before the vote and be safe. Uh, we aren't tracking points for finding, for, uh, finding advantages, but Natalie is two for two in Survivor Season 40. And does anyone else think that she would be a huge threat to come back into the game? I mean, it's probably too early to start talking about who's going to come back since we don't know when players are going to come back. But I don't know. I feel like Natalie, regardless of who else comes there, I think she's definitely a contender. Uh, so it was fun to see Jeremy and Natalie still being a tight duo despite by not being together in the game anymore. Uh, so that's a unique aspect of the game that I find pretty interesting. Uh, and again, I think learning about the timeline in Danny's play, where she wanted to get to vote out poverty, would be interesting to know. And the latter. Although I was so nervous for Tony, um, 
all of those confessionals that went along with that whole fiasco uh, <laughs> and knowing that he was eventually safe uh, made it for very fun television. Uh, so those are my highlights. And moving forward, okay, I really don't like that Adam isn't trusting Ben. And I wonder if that will come back against one of them. Uh, will the talk about Ben being all over the pa- place make him a target? Or will possibly Adam speaking out against Boston Rob make him a target? When the whole dump your bag thing and Adam spoke out, will that make him a target? Uh, if that happens, will Denise's idol come into play to save Adam or not? Uh, I think at this point, I would guess that players like Jeremy and Michelle will dictate whether someone like Ben or Adam goes home next week. And if I had to take a guess from the Blue Tribe, Sele Tribe, uh, I would probably say it's Adam. Uh, last week, I predicted that Kim would go home from the DeKal Tribe. DeKal? Is that right? The call tribe. Uh, but that tribe was safe from elimination. Uh, besides that, it's still hard to see Kim getting that idol back from Sophie after Sophie said Kim shouldn't trust her. It could turn eventually into like some type of double cross maneuver where Sophie gives her the idol to gain her trust, but then tells the others to vote another way. So she wastes it, but Kim's still in the game. So she has that trust. Um, so those are my thoughts on the second episode. Uh, again, great television. This is an amazing season. Survivor season 40, Winners at War. Huge fan of the season so far. Uh, I want to thank everyone for listening along. I'm trying to settle into this whole podcast thing, so I appreciate everyone who is listening. Um, stay tuned for future co- coverage and whatever other episodes I bring up, and I'll see everyone next time. Okay, bye.